Hey y'all, welcome back to Art with McKenzie. We are going with uh, video two, part two of our Supergirl paint job. And where we left off is a spackling color onto uh, Supergirl's skin. Now what this does is cause uh, a subcutaneous scatter of light for when we put on future coats. You won't readily be able to see all of the differences in color, but the way the light scatters through the paint and reflects and bounces off, um, it gives you that realistic look that painters strive for. As you can see, it's a really easy process. Um, but what we're doing here is getting uh, dabs of dark and dabs of light. Um, and when we do our overcoat, um, you'll see that the shading and highlights and midtones uh, all look just phenomenal. Um, and there's nothing special that I'm doing here, just, just flicking on paint and then dabbing it with a sponge. And for our light coat, our first coat, we're going to use a, a light flesh. Um, and this will be like fatty tissue that's in between the subcutaneous uh, blood layers. And that also uh, divides up the skin um, so it doesn't look like it's just a solid color. Because you can really tell the difference between like a solid color and something that has depth and nuance and complexity to it. The way actual skin has. And this was quite a pain in the butt. To, uh, to flick on the paint. Probably should have used a brush with shorter hairs uh, so they're more stiff. Um, so when you bring the bristles back and flick it, um, they'll kind of pop back to their original shape and then you can just keep flicking and it works. But I do the best I can. Um, I use my finger right here, see? I just go back and forth. Sometimes I just use my finger. Because again, we're going to dab with a sponge just to break up uh, some of that blood color that we have below. But nothing special. No fancy techniques. Nothing that you can't do at your home. And if you don't have these sponges uh, that I got off of Amazon, they're just basic makeup sponges. I got them like a, like a pack of 200 or something. Uh, a cotton ball work, works just as well, or if you don't have cotton balls, uh, uh, paper towel. Just wad up a paper towel and dab it, dab your paint on. Um, and we do the same for her belly, and we're going to do the same for her torso. Didn't do the same for her face, which I probably should have. Uh, but this is my first time painting a 3D printed model. And, um... I wasn't quite exactly sure what I was doing. I know what needed to be done. I just didn't know it would work out as well as it did. But it's still a fun process. And you can start to just barely see how uh, those speckles of paint below are starting to affect how the light hits the model. It's a pretty cool process to see, you know, as you're doing it. So that flesh paint that we just put on, we're going to thin it with some water and uh, put on a first thin, thin coat. As you can see here, you're just uh, homogenizing the lower colors, the under colors. Are there technical terms for any of this? Probably. And if you know them, leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to keep making up my own words, like Flavin Klukerl, which is a real word because I just made it up just now. So spray your Flavin Klukerl onto your model. And what this layer is um, representing is the that adipose fatty tissue that everyone has underneath their skin um, that's, that's, that's basically what this goes for 
nothing fancy. Um, it should be the same for uh, all ethnicities. Um, it's that upper coat that has all of the melanin in it that will give you that change and differentiation in, in skin tone. But we are going with a Caucasian Supergirl on this go round. I'm sure in future videos I'll be doing different ethnicities and those will be uh, pretty fun to do as well. I'm sure it's going to be the same process. We're going to see it all. So what I like to think of when I'm painting these models is a uh, like fifth element. Like 3D printing uh, Mia Jovovich you know, as she's coming out of that weird 3D printer DNA thing. Uh, because every level that you do, um, there's a reason behind it. Um, so this is basically the same process. Uh, we're going to start darkening up the skin with the cork flesh, sunny skin tone, uh, regular skin tone, and this brown rose. Uh, along with a little bit of flat red and we'll get this base generic white color and this is the the skin layer so it's still gonna be thin you're still gonna see through and see a lot of um, just that horrible detail below because you're going to keep painting and layering until it looks right. As you can see around here by her knee, uh, how the light is hitting it, and you can start seeing uh, the detail in uh, this particular artist's sculpt. Uh, I didn't do this sculpt. I am working on my own right now. Uh, that way I can just make my own and paint my own. Um, but the artist who made this did a really good job so props out to him or her who created this uh, because he did really good detail uh, with the biology and anatomy of the whole body as you can see because as um, we're painting we can see that detail pop through uh, and it starts looking like real skin it's really a magical process and I kinda like to show you all of uh, the important parts and I kinda skip through things that you're probably smart enough to figure out on your own but if these videos are too long you know give me a shout out let me know if you want these videos to be a little bit shorter I can figure out how to cut them down if you like them the way they are uh, don't comment at all but if you really like them then do me a favor and, and like the video it takes just a second to hit that like button it really helps out this channel because I want to keep bringing you all uh, art stuff of all kinds um, and it's just fun to do it's fun to share with you As we're painting the belly, uh, you can see uh, the definition of the muscle tone underneath coming through the sculpt. If you just painted it one color, you wouldn't really see it so much. Um, it's really the, the shadows that give you that contrast. Uh, and if you didn't have all those lower layers that we just painted, um, you wouldn't see that, that contrast. You pretty much just see the highlights. And that's so fun. You want to see you want to see all the detail. You can do what um, a lot of people do, and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, that we talked about in the last video is painting uh, the shadows in. Uh, what I call cheating the shadows. You can cheat the shadows all you want. It's where you just paint a darker color where uh, a shadow would be. 
if there was a light source in a particular direction. But with these models, there's no telling where you're going to end up putting it. Because if you're painting it in your little studio, or in your dining room, or basement, or attic, uh, hopefully you're not painting in the kitchen, because it'll get on your food and it's just gross. But come on. You can, you can find a better spot than the kitchen. I'm looking at you, Michael. But you don't know where you're going to end up putting these sculpts. Uh, so the lighting, wherever you're painting it, may look great there. Um, but when you move it to the living room, bedroom, or give it away as a gift, uh, you don't know how the lighting's going to look. So you want it to look good in all the lighting. Um, and the only way to do that is to get a really good... Uh, skin tone color. And then I just go about and paint on her face. Um, I don't really know how to paint faces on models, so this is uh, just a big test. But I'll take that same color because it's uh, slightly darker with a little bit more uh, yellow in it, I suppose. Uh, and we'll do another extremely light coat over that last one. Um, it is slightly darker, uh, so we're getting a lot of the good fleshy colors that we need. Now this is a clear skin that I'm painting, meaning there's no um, like freckles or defects to it. Uh, defects. Well, the freckles aren't defects, man. Come on. Moles. That's just the way God made you. But for this uh, video, I'm just going with a non-freckled uh, body. Um, adding freckles is really easy. It's basically that whole flicking technique, except it's uh, extremely light. Uh, with a better scatter and really a really thin paint uh, so that you can barely see it. Um, and honestly I was checking to see if I could do the freckling with that type of uh, spackling I was doing earlier with the underlayers and I could not. So that's why I decided to keep uh, her skin here um, freckle free. But for fun, you can always paint in, uh, get a paintbrush, dab it in a, a light brown that we've used before, and just put random freckles wherever you want, because that's how that's how bodies are. I'll just have random, random freckles. So it gives your model some character, yeah, a little individuality, kind of make her your own. It's pretty neat. And I am painting over the entire area. We're going to start um, not doing that. But I'll get my heat gun. As you can see, it, uh, it darkens to the color that I need. And she's really starting to look like she has skin. I got two shrunken woman legs just stuck on friggin' sticks. But I take this color, I add a dab of red to darken it up some, and I test on this lid to see how thin it is, and I'll thin it based off that. So I did thin it up a little bit more, um, and this is an even thinner coat that I put on. But it rounds out the color um, and gives it a little bit more more realism to it.
If you're liking what you're seeing, like the video, comment down below, share with your friends. But most importantly, subscribe. I got 300 of y'all following me, which is amazing. I appreciate every last one of you. But for us to see um, better content, I need more subscribers. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, uh, go ahead and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can see me do more of this stuff. Maybe you learn something. Maybe it's just uh, mildly entertaining. Uh, maybe you need something on the background for you know your kid to go to sleep to. Some white noise. That's what this channel is good for. It's also good for some art every once in a while. Um, so yeah, subscribe. Help me out. Let me uh, let me bring you more stuff. So we're gonna add vermilion, uh, some brown, and now we're going for uh, the real melanin shades and I will uh, spottily spray this in spots <laughs> no I won't be consistent everywhere where I paint um, from here on out um, I'll just lightly dust in some areas uh, because again skin everywhere is not perfect it's not a perfect sheen all the way across it's not a perfect hue uh, or tone So I plop off um, a couple good sprays and uh, just let it fall where it falls. Um, and I'm not going for uniform um, coloring here. So you can see in the background those legs, how they're uh, reflecting the lights and you know, soaking up them shadows. That is all just the coloring of the legs. Nothing, none of that's faked. Now I'll head up her face again. I should have done the speckling and stuff on her face. Mm -mm -mm. But again, my first go, so. We all learn a little bit here. I'll continue uh, working on her uniform. She's got this collar around here. Could have gone with blue, or red, even yellow. Uh, but I went with gold. Why? I don't know. Gold looks good. So we'll get this little collar. We'll get her earring. start putting together seeing how this works now what I don't adjust for and if you're printing out uh, your own resin prints I don't know if you're new to it as I am um, or if you're a pro but one thing I've never heard I'll get back to that in a second I did make a oopsie daisy here on the leg uh, with a wet finger on not completely dry paint. Um, so I'm just taking that last layer of uh, color that I just had, and I'm going over it a few times to clear it up. Um, hit it with the heat gun until it becomes decent looking again. And we're circling back around to the prints. Um, I've noticed that on, um, on resin printing, as the layers uh, come up off that FEP film they might bow out a little bit so if you're expecting to have a perfectly flat surface and it's parallel to your build plate um, it could bow out and give you a slightly uneven surface it still looks good and it's just about right um, but it's just about and not perfect 
I've seen other guys uh, fill in those gaps with uh, some green goo and whatnot. Um, but I didn't do that here. I just fitted it together uh, to see how it looked. Uh, she's looking really good, though. I'm, I'm really liking how she's coming along. Uh, so we'll take that old blue, uh, a dark blue that we had last time, um, and we're going to make it a little bit darker by adding a little bit more royal blue and black. I'll give it a little stirry stir, thin it out some, and it's just going to be slightly darker. And this is where I cheat the shadows in the clothes. Because clothes don't have, you know, a half inch of different layers that scatter light differently. Uh, it's just a thin, it's just, it's just clothes, man. There's nothing, nothing to it. Uh, so I do cheat the shadows here uh, to help bring out more contrast and detail. Go along the seams, anywhere uh, that there's an overhang. I'll stack my little sticky stack cups. I'll go for a chopper royal blue. Add color in at 2214. And some white. And now we're going to do the highlights. And for fun, I add just a dash of silver. What's it going to do? I don't know. I think it's going to make it sparkle a little bit. Um, but I'll change the orientation of my model as I paint, um, just so the paint hits uh, those hills that, that pop out. Um, and it's not a euphemism for uh, her, her boobs. Uh, anywhere that comes out of the the, uh, the model where there's not an overhang uh, is going to get hit with uh, some of this highlight. And if there's some overspray uh, that hits another part of the model, just that much better because it'll hit that high part uh, as well. I don't want to go for a completely uniform look because um, I think with the immediate contrast of the different colors gives it a more dynamic look like she's moving or you know something something fun's happening we'll hit it up with a heat gun try it off and then we'll do the same with uh, her arms I've been having a booger of time with this airbrush uh, because it's not perfectly clean. I don't clean it nearly as often as I should. Uh, so remember, if you're paint brushing, good paintbrush maintenance is uh, highly suggested. Proper PMCS will fix 99% of all issues. But since this video, I have cleaned my airbrush and it's gotten a lot better and it's fantastic. So I'll tape off her S and I'll just hand paint this. And I really wanted the colors on here to be bright, so I just use a white paint as a, an underlayer. layer. 
that way it gets um, it pops that red and the yellow in a second probably should have spray painted that white uh, to get a nice even coat uh, because there are some spots where I do have some buildup and, and it, it does build up along the S and you can you can you can see it it's not, it's not the greatest um, but you live and learn or you watch my videos and learn um, that way you don't have to make that mistake as well um, hand painting the yellow in the S is probably a good idea, but that, that under layer that it's going to go on definitely needed to be airbrushed. And like I said before, my hands are shaky, so I need uh, something solid to put my hands on as I paint. But I've put her together so far, and you can see all the highlights and the shading. She looks phenomenal. Boots are looking good. Nice, good realism that I was going for. And now the head and the hair. I don't have much experience in this area, so I just do a base coat of a nice golden yellow. And as I'm painting, I'm kind of looking to see how it's reacting with the sculpt. I dry it off. I'll come back in with a wet brush. Gotta get some of these um, high points for highlights. And as I'm going around, I see all the uh, little nibbins, little little turds. It came off of the uh, the supports of the resin print. So on the next go around, I will be working a little bit harder to make sure I get rid of those little nibbins. Uh, and I come back with a brown to get her roots because I like that look. Why? I don't know. I just do. Um, and I'll use this for. getting some some different colors up in her hair make it a little bit more dynamic but like everywhere else I'm a uh, cheat in the shadows so where it's dark I'll spray brown back to her face with some of those other colors that we had earlier kind of fix the overspray that I had also a note for next time I will be uh, dousing her face in a latex protective latex so I can just do her hair and not have to worry about overspray and then when I'm ready to do her face rip off the latex boom nice beautiful face unmarred by my shaky brushing and I've thrown in some red to give her a makeup look and I'm just going around her eyes nice and soft give her a rosy glow I'll put a little dash on her cheeks because why not And I also noticed um, as I was painting her, there's this weird layer line that didn't quite set right. And it's really small. Probably can't even notice on the camera, but I can. Uh, and I've seen that in a few other prints. So if any of y'all have any good tips or tricks to how to avoid that on uh, resin printing, uh, let me know. Throw a comment down below. Otherwise, I'll just be rolling the dice and hoping for the best. And here comes my best work. Uh, Mr. Shaky Hands. I 
decide to hand paint her eyebrows. Um, probably could have gotten a better setup. Because right here, I decide, you know what? Maybe drawing inside the lines is a bad idea. And I'm going to paint in her eyebrows above the sculpted eyebrow. Because that's going to look good. It doesn't look good. I don't know why I even kept going. See that silly eyebrow? Oh, I was trying to make it match. Did the best I could. That's all I can do. Um, not great. Not terrible. Um, and I did lose the video of her eyes. So uh, I'll have to follow that up on the next video. Otherwise, here she is. Uh, mostly, this is for... Uh, her skin, which came out great. The shading is great. The lighting is great, no matter where uh, the light is coming from. Because I didn't cheat the shadows, uh, it's exactly how she looks. So, great first job, I think, on this particular model if you want to see me do a better job on the next one you're gonna to have to hit like and subscribe because uh, honestly that's the only way I can keep going with these things uh, is if I know you're watching and um, you're looking and you like it so if you like it let me know help me out uh, because you get to see great things like this now obviously if you uh, put a sheen on uh, a varnish uh, I did not so this is just um, how she looks with uh, the Vallejo paint that I've been using um, we could probably do a matte to give her probably a more natural glow uh, but I did not here this is just straight up Vallejo paints doing their their magic in the light I mean you can't notice all the underwork that we did with our eye but you can definitely tell at the end result so thanks for tagging along and uh watching and i will see y'all next time